Hello, my name is Dr. George Machanti, and welcome to uh, uh, Marketing 217 Advertising, Chapter 3, offered by Harper College uh, on economic and regulatory uh, issues. You either take me in an online class or face-to-face -face class, and uh, you're utilizing this as a supplement. You already have uh, access to my mind maps and uh, the, the textbooks that we'll be utilizing. Okay, so let's get on to this. This is uh, these last, uh, this chapter and the last chapter is basically talking about regulations and uh, uh, ethics. Just general information were, uh, you know, more of a historical and fact-finding for these first few chapters that uh, we'll be exploring or we're doing this uh, in this series is uh, to set up a good foundation. And then the following chapters, we're going to start looking at social media and actually developing uh, um, uh, advertising ads and see how it <coughs> integrates with a uh, integrated marketing campaign okay so let's start uh, looking about some controversies <coughs> when you look at advertising and marketing in general marketing uh, uh, you have to be creative but in marketing a lot of times it's a little different uh, it's not as cut and dry as you would do in some other areas or functionalities like in management or engineering or, or, or a basic uh, business functionality. In marketing, you're probably trying to be creative, trying to stimulate and try to get attention and try to get people to uh, buy or look or be aware of my product or my business. So sometimes marketing, when, when I look at marketing and advertising, which is a component of marketing, this thing is the printed media, how do I bring the message out, is you're right at that borderline. You're always trying to push that uh, envelope without violating any kind of rules or without violating uh, customer's confidence or, uh, and without hurting the brand. So stating that, you could see that in some advertising campaigns, they've went a little bit too far. They crossed that line. You know, that's an invisible line. And that line kind of adjusts this, and it adjusts what a marketer could do or an advertiser could do in the print, depending on how the culture, what's acceptance. And if I'm looking at some advertising a while back when you would have a, a, a biracial a, a, a families. So, you know, a, a, like my... A, a, my son's married to a, a Mexican. My my other uh, uh, daughter was married to a, a, a Jamaican. Yeah. So when I look at that, uh, so you have biracial uh, families, and that's the new culture. You have single parents now. You have um, uh, uh, individuals who are basically uh, not the traditional family. The traditional family, if you look at it, you know, uh, mom, dad, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, two kids and, and a dog, that's only about, like, about 20% or 30% of the uh, new culture. Everything else has changed. People are cohabiting uh, together. Uh, they're they're dis uh, postponing marriages or not being married. So the culture has changed. And what you would expect, since culture changed, and advertising has to change. So the first ad that came on, uh, I'm not going to mention any, uh, you know, the ad, but the, you know, the, you had an African American uh, uh, dad laying there, and then you had uh, a child coming, hey daddy, are you, uh, are you okay, or eating Cheerios, or whatever the, uh, the brand was, and all of a sudden, the, the child you could see was uh, a mixed culture, uh, uh, light-skinned uh, African American. And then later on, the mom comes in, yeah, this is good for dad. And that was basically pushing the envelope in, uh, from the marketing because you never would have a, 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 a bicultural families ad now they're all over they're constant but the first time that came out people were going hey are they pushing the envelope you know because <clears throat> if you look at more in the urban areas it's more acceptable this and the, there's nothing but if you still go down to certain areas uh, more to rural areas there is still that stigma that everyone should stay within their culture I'm not saying it's right or wrong but please mine is not doing it. I'm just trying to uh, tie this in with the uh, with the historical value of what we're learning so uh, so you see from a marketer perspective the, the new technology and so I'm always pushing the envelope but since cultures changed I should represent the culture and that's what an advertising do. But sometimes they push the, uh, they push an agenda further than what the culture is ready to accept. So then that becomes uh, uh, unethical 
or uh, distasteful to some individuals. So you see, the, the fine balance you have to do when you're an advertiser, uh, 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 either having a jingle or having something. They had one ad there where they had a lady, more European, where they had a lady that had her foot up and they're trying to sell a shoe and they're saying, you know, uh, you get two pair of shoes but you only need one uh, because I'm handicapped or something like that. You know, and, and that was distasteful. And even the European Union said that was a distasteful type of ad. That was, you know, mentioned in, in your reading. So when you look at that, that's something that culture will say, hey, there's certain things you could play around with, make fun of, but certain things that you should, is, is distasteful. It may not be unethical. Uh, I mean, it may not, un, un, it could be still unethical. It may not be illegal, but it's distasteful. And that's where some of the rules come in and regulations come in. So remember, I'm pushing it, but I gotta be careful so I don't change the whole dynamic. But once government puts regulations and rules in, it keeps on tightening in my, uh, 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 my creativity, for lack of a word, from a, uh, from a market perspective. So let's look at some controversies. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, economic impact, abundance, and, all, and a lot of this is just a carryover from Chapter 2 that we just uh, uh, had, or Series 2 that you uh, uh, we, we had uh, uh, in the last uh, chapter. Okay, so let's look at some uh, controversies. And there's a lot of controversies. It's not wrong. Okay, so now let me see if I, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger this way here. It'll be a little bit easier. Let's keep on making this bigger. Okay. So, uh, both economic and social concerns. Uh, affect the product value. If I look at the effect of the product value, and this is something that's uh, uh, out of your book here, advertising gives products added value. You know, Coke, different kind. Are advertised products necessarily better for you? Remember, they're giving me a perception that Coca-Cola, and I'm just using this, is good for you, or it gives you, it's the end thing to do. So, but does it add value? I mean, tangible value. Maybe not. Maybe it just gives you that uh, 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 untangible value, that perception that it is good for you. Okay, remember? And that's what advertising and marketing does. But how far do I push that where some people may actually believe that this is uh, 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 added value and it's a tangible, but it's just a perceived value. Okay? So it also, uh, when I'm looking at controversies, affect the uh, uh, cause higher or lower prices. Remember my advertising? Uh, if I'm looking at uh, how I advertise, if I say it's worth more because it's natural, or you know, I, I advertise it's organic, it's really not organic, so I could charge a higher price. So that's being deceptive on that. Makes us buy things we don't need. That's advertising, persuasive uh, uh, marketing. I mean, that's what the business is. But a lot of times, uh, if you look at it, uh, and look how they do it for kids when they go into a shopping center, they got all the candy and the eye level for uh, a, a child, maybe about you know about two or three feet, you know, uh, four to six years old. We can look at the uh, they're waiting in line and they're exactly always in front. Where no matter where you're at in the line, the little kid, uh, ch child could go in there and say, "Mommy, mommy, buy me this." Now, is that being deceptive or is that just strategically placing your ads in the right place? So now you're buying something you may not need, or you say, "Buy now." It's the last time the sale's over. Well, I need this, but I may not need it for two years. By two years, I may not. Uh, uh, I mean, I need that uh, that uh, uh, item that I just purchased. But remember, I'm selling marketing. This is an advertising. My job as advertising is to convince customers that he or she or businesses that this is my uh, that this product is something that could bring value into you. So you remember, it's uh, what's valuable to me may not be valuable to you. So it's a fine line. That's why you have to understand the consumer behavior and understand uh, what the consumer wants. You know, uh, uh, does it uh, affect us subliminally? I mean, when I look at subliminal uh, messages, when I see certain ads from McDonald's or Burger King, and I keep on seeing after a while, I got to, oh, what am I going to eat today? And I'll say, oh, the last thing in my mind that was planted was a McDonald's ad or Burger King ad or Wendy ad, and I saw a coupon in there. I said, oh, I already got this going. So I may not want it, I want, may want it healthy, but it says, look, you got $2 off, even though it's unhealthy, it's like, man, I got a good deal. So now I have to make that choice, that dilemma that I'm in there, uh, the ethical dilemma, I'm going to make a choice between healthy food and non-healthy food, and maybe advertising kind of pushes me in, so let's try this once in a while. It's okay, you know, somebody had, it's okay to uh, let go once in a while and have something that's unhealthy, you know, so you don't live in that rigid uh, uh, environment, for lack of a better word. Okay, it affects the demand. Uh, and, and McDonald's found that out when they uh, quit advertising because they figured everyone understood their value meal. So they didn't advertise. By the, missing the advertising, that means that McDonald's label or that arch or whatever was not in the consumer's mind. After a while, it, it was in the back because I saw Burger King, I see Wendy's, I saw uh, uh, Sonic's or, or, or some other 
ads that were uh, supplying the same needs, and I forgot all about McDonald's. So they lost. They saved some money, but in the long run, they lost. Remember, part of advertising is not only to stimulate sales, it's also to remind customers what they've missed before or what we have. It's kind of to keep on the brain awareness within the individual. That's part of, mar that's part of marketing, and that's what the advertising does through the jingles, through the campaigns, through the coupons, through wherever you see the McDonald's arches, through the sponsorships, or, you know, you're watching a baseball game, you see McDonald's logo or burger, logos or Home Depot or whatever it does help us influence the choices because a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of times you like it or not if you look at the, the halo effect for it's the last thing I remember was McDonald's so I got a taste for McDonald's or Burger King or Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever I'm not trying to select one or the other because all of them you see the ads constantly which one do you want so I just had hamburgers last time let me try this one I had a hamburger let me try a different type of hamburger because you know they're, they're still trying to go for the same consumer in the same market that's eating fast food that may not be healthy fast food but how do I get these uh, consumers to uh, select my product over another product that may be similar but mine may be a little different McDonald's got the uh, Big Mac uh, Burger King got the broil it's supposed to be a little bit healthier but they put all the other stuff on there is it you know then you got Subway it's supposed to be real healthy and then you have other ones you know uh, uh, Jimmy John's coming in there so they're all competing for the same customer base but I have to do something else to make my product look bigger than, uh, or better or uh, uh, perceived as more value. Perception and tangible. Sometimes there is more value in that because here's how much it is uh, for the product. Here's how you know uh, what I'm getting. I'm getting a quarter pounder versus I want to get a regular hamburger for the same price. So you're looking at that value. Okay, encourages materialism. That's a capitalist system. Remember when you looked at uh, uh, before when we talked about uh, the self-interest of uh, the, the society, uh, economics, and basically what is it for me? And does it encourage materialism? Most likely it does. And, and, and I'm not uh, denying that. But that's part of the advertising to say, I've got a product, what else could you do? You know, that's part of the quality of life and standards of living. I have the money, I have disposable income, what should I do with it? I could save it all. You know, the, the, the social responsible thing is to give it to charity, give it to the church, give it to some kind of a, a, a non-profit organization. But people say, hey, I want something for myself. I worked hard, I want to pamper myself. So it does kind of encourage it but encourages you're gonna know, spend the money so why not spend it in my uh, uh, with my product or service promotes or discourages uh, competition yes and if you look at that uh, uh, in a political realm when one is uh, making fun of the other ones or, or, or something's going on within the marketing campaign or the political campaign so it says that you know uh, uh, my hamburger has more meat the other hamburger doesn't have any more meat and then when, when subway was less than uh, uh, the six inches or, or the 12 inches the foot long because somebody measured the, uh, the bread and say hey I got ripped off by half an inch and that was poor bad uh, publicity everyone else the other ones jumped on and say hey our sandwiches are exactly 20% larger than what we claim always guaranteed so you see how that kind of does uh, uh, promote or discourage competition if you're in the wrong uh, the base is the language okay so if I'm looking at marketing and advertising I put in different slogans I put in uh, certain things I kind of use my wording in my advertising to catch the attention of the individual but it may not be uh, 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 I don't want to say deceptive. It's just manipulating of uh, words or phrases. So it's kind of changing the English, you know, a little slang of what we're used to, just to get your attention. Remember, the whole thing of advertising and marketing is to stand out outside the audience so they look at my product what did they do did they make a mistake in the spelling did they do something oops we made a mistake we bought too much oh there's a sale you, you go to some stores you know if i look at the uh, advertising going out of business sale and that store's been on you know i go to chicago the store's been going out of business for the last 10 years is that a sale or not or sometimes it's like that you see in the, if you go to jewel osco uh, i mean jewel or uh, what do you call it uh, target or walmart they usually all do the same where it says uh, sale and they have it in an orange tag and it says twenty nine, uh, you know, uh, two ninety nine. They're going to jump in it. I always pull the tag back there and it says two ninety nine. The regular price is two ninety nine. I say, hey, you're deceiving me. No, I'm not. It says it's on sale for so two ninety nine. I just packed and put in an orange. We're just so conditioned. We see an orange tag. That means there's a sale item. Is we assume it's going to be reduced. Or you have uh, Walgreens, for lack of better words, when they come in there, you have to be careful in the fine print. Or even a lot of them, the Walgreens will say uh, 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 two for uh, four dollars. But you have to read the five print. You have to buy two. 
Because otherwise, you just buy one and it's uh, $4 for one. Unless you buy two, you don't get the other one for two. So so you're looking at that where customers don't look at the prices. You just see it, grab it, grab two, grab one or grab two, just figuring we could divide it. But don't look at the uh, at the conditions, just the fine print. Now, is that deceptive? Not really. Should the print be bigger? I'm a salesperson. I'm a marketer. I'm an advertiser. Minus two, legally get you to buy my products and to enhance you and to motivate you and to persuade you to buy my product over my com uh, competitors and still being honest and uh, ethical and not being uh, deceitful but uh, but remember I, I'm just one of the uh, most of you are going to go in advertising I basically feel that you should be honest truthful to the customer but you can embellish a little bit you know what I mean uh, like I say hey, I'm good looking maybe I'm only good looking to myself or to my wife or to my kids everyone else thinks Geez, he's good looking my good but I could say that because it's about me I could say my product is this you know and a lot of times when you look at a product sometimes when they use statistics they say uh, uh, rated number one by uh, by all dentists uh, by dentists that were uh, uh, serving how many dentists did they serve they never say that they may only service 10 uh, dentists that they know that utilize this and all 10 says yeah this is the best product but is, is it the whole population so when you're looking at that that's where I look at more of the deceptive pushing the edge but I'm looking I did a survey and here's my population and it's ethical and it's got the confidence level that's where I'm looking at from advertising you because once you start deceiving your customers and your customer base find out that you're deceptive advertising they know there's some kind of embellishing and enhancing of the word you're going to lose that brand the brand are going to look at it and say that brand the brand already the strong brand it starts diminishing the moral fiber of that brand is is going down right mine is always to be socially responsible be ethical and, and that's what advertising should be and that's why i stress that advertising companies that are played by the rules by the game in the long run to always succeed and the, doing this consulting and talking to customers and and, and and other individuals what you find out that though after a while when a, a special business business felt he or she got deceived by a marketing campaign that wasn't uh, didn't materialize that they didn't tell me all the facts basically would go to the uh, to the to their competitors and put the whole order and then never do business with that uh, company again and uh, now the word of mouth that company is a deceptive or unethical uh, company using unethical uh, uh, advertising practices plus the bad publicity will come out you know uh, 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 debase uh, affect uh, uh, effective art and culture again you know uh, how much creativity could you do uh, you know is it really affecting how cultures think because advertising you know when uh, if I look in the fashion uh, section when I look at fashion what's fashionable is what somebody says is fashionable and they market it and everyone says they see they have sponsors they have uh, uh, individuals that are stars you know either uh, football stars or movie celebrities saying we love this shirt and now everyone wants it so it is affecting culture because now that's the new way otherwise you wouldn't have known it you, you see the person wearing it and they have a different color stripes or have a, a different design and say hey that's the kind of look I want to do because I want to be just like him or her that I, uh, I admire for lack of a better word okay free market economic uh, thing I'm gonna go real quickly we discussed this in chapter two and I just go real quickly you know self-interest if I look at free markets always what's in it for me company uh, countries all the way up it's just a human nature I can't change it complete information you should tell them everything about the the, the things and you see that in the in the advertising and that's because of regulations we'll talk about later when you look at um, uh, drug uh, 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 advertising certain types of prescriptions of drugs to ask your doctor that's more of a push uh, 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 strategy to get your doctor to uh, uh, what do you call it to come in and, and uh, prescribe the drug that he or she may not want it but when they say he prescribed this this uh, drug uh, 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 a game drug I'm just making that up uh, a game drug will help you get taller stronger muscular uh, or, or whatever and then at the end it's saying a better way to cause a cancer you know 50 miles a mile what the heck and all of a sudden you know because they by regulation had to do it so not a new regulation is saying you're talking too fast people can't read it they just uh, think it's a big joke you are only instead of saying all the hundred things that it could do uh, list the first uh, five ten most common negative side effects and say it as slowly as you do the regular marketing 
Remember, because that's uh, when you're looking at complete information. So the buyer has it. Again, buyers and sellers and absence of externalities and those are rules and other uh, uh, external forces coming in. Okay, now the impact on this, and we talked a little bit about this in the last chapter. So let's go on here. Yeah, let's go on this billiard uh, model. And, and this one works real good in the book. What it basically looked at, those who play uh, pool. And I grew up in Chicago, so I used to, yeah, I still play pool. I enjoy pool. Uh, it, it's old-fashioned. But, you, you know, you got to... Uh, uh, this is tragedy how you play pool. So here's advertising. It's part of the media. So they advertise in the media. They hit to the consumer or the trade customers. Then they basically go into um, uh, the competition. They go into the retailers. You see how the ball just hits. And it throws everything out. Boom, boom, boom. Now the competition sees the ads. They try to come back. The retailers are forced to respond to the ad. Uh, or they are the, uh, the individual's that say, hey, we got to carry this product, customers are asking for it. The distributors always, all of them are probably somehow tied into the, looking at what my competition is doing the ad. The manufacturers, wholesalers, suppliers, it, and then it finally gets to the individuals, the directors, the managers, the employees, some kind. All of this is basically how the economic effect advertising is like open up a break shop in, uh, uh, in Billboard. You don't know what's going to hit. Some balls will fall in, some won't, but that's what advertising is. I'm sure. Targeting out there. Remember, when we're looking at now, the, the most advertising is expensive. If I do mass advertising just uh, uh, to bring in information, but what I'm looking for is um, more of a niche so I could focus into a geographic or a customer base or a certain culture specific information just to get that segment. Because I know the the triggers, I understand that segment to buy my product. It's more effective use of my advertising do dollars. But still, some of that advertising can go someplace else. May, what may not be offensive to one culture may be very offensive to somebody else. But I'm not targeting that culture. But you have to be still sensitive because sometimes it may come out, the other culture may see it, and they may never look at your product because they saw that one ad that was targeted to uh, a, a different segment than, uh, than theirs. Okay? All right, so you know you got the prices, you got the competition, consumer demand. Okay, so let's see affected areas before uh, prices. Consumers, let me just move this over so you can see a little bit better. Consumer pays ad small percentage of the cost. Like it or not, every time I'm advertising, that's part of my overall cost, my expense for doing business. Yeah, mass production lowers the unit of the cost per uh, my ad. Government price controls uh, tell me how much I could spend. Uh, on certain products, uh, ads can support higher or lower prices. Okay, competition can reduce business in an industry, inhabit competitors and regional local competitions can work, consumer demand, like it or not, advertising stimulates the primary demand, influence selective demand, and influences conquest sales. I have to have advertising to get customers in. I can't sell to them if they don't know I have the product. I can't sell to them if I can't reach them. So ads say, call me now or call this number. We The first five individuals who call will get a $200 discount. And when you really know in reality, they'll take anyone who calls in that's going to get the $200 discount. You're going to be the first five. So you feel like, oh, I finally got that. That's the motivation. Now, is that deceptive? No, it's part of uh, uh, it's a fine line because most people you think a rational person will know they're going to keep on calling. If I wait 20 minutes, you mean I'm the first five out of all of them and I got the $200 discount? But it still makes me feel good. It works on my cognitive dissonance that we've learned about in psychology and other things that reinforces that I made a good uh, a choice. Okay? Now, uh, consumer choice. It encourages unique products and services because I'm targeting. It uh, uh, New, uh, better brands dominate. Why the choice for consumers? Because now you see different ads. When you go in there, I see this ad, you know, they'll say, uh, a lot of stores will say, if you bring in an ad of my competitors, I'll match it or reduce it by 10%. And that's why you, when you're looking at when uh, 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 manufacturers are dealing the ads, because that's what's going in marketing, so you're looking for that ad to take to, my, to another store that's closer. What happens is that the manufacturers will change the model number. It could be the same thing you know, if I look at Sears and Kenmore or uh, and uh, uh, Maytag and uh, I forgot who it is, uh, uh, 
interesting. Uh, the, the other competition, because you know, Maytag makes a lot of things for Sears, and it take, uh, makes a lot of things for uh, Whirlpool. Uh, the same company makes it, but a different brand name, different model number. So when you bring the ad in and say, look, I could this sell this for five, uh, for $20, uh, for $100 cheaper, you say, yeah, but the model number is different, the size is different, the ounces are off. This is a, a 20 ounce, and this one here is a 19.999 ounce. So manufacturers have learned to adjust to the different segments and advertisers learned how to utilize that to stimulate, say, hey, come on over here, get the ad. But I bring the ad in and say, no, it's not there. They said, we can't help you, but let me call a manager. Maybe I'll give you 10% uh, uh, off instead of the 50% off you got there. Now, is that bait and switch? Again, part of advertising, get the customer in. If I get the customer in, mine is to try to upgrade them up or try to uh, sell them. They can, I have to talk to them first and still be eth uh, ethical, uh, ethical about it, okay? Remember, uh, I'm a double major, management and marketing. And marketing is the one that you always write at that cuff. You write it, put it the one foot over. So you've got to be always careful so you don't cross that line. You always have to be cognizant. You always have to keep your moral fiber. Is and you always have to do the SWOT analysis. And you're always doing the ethical. How, you know, uh, is this uh, legal? First question. Next question. Is this uh, ethical? Depending on my market. And what would my customers or anyone uh, think about me? Remember those uh, three questions you learn about ethics that you should ask before you see if this uh, if it's an ethical uh, issue. Okay. Now product uh, uh, cycles. And let's use the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, excuse me. It's, uh, Kind of dry mouth, and on the business cycle. Advertising contributes to increase the business cycle. Advertising acts as a stabilizing force. So I increase the business, and I also keep the uh, cycle going by reminding customers. Uh, like I used the McDonald's thing, or they forgot to advertise. Even if they don't use the coupon, you're gonna get some people to use the coupon, but it's just that it's the exposure out there to stabilize my sales, so I don't drop it, and it's hard to comp uh, uh, to catch up. And not only that, if I didn't have anything else here, my my competitors or my customers are trying out my competitors and once they try out your competitors they may not come back to you it's almost something like like you say hey could you take my uh, a wife out because I can't make it to there I could take my girlfriend or my boyfriend out uh, here because I can't make it and you know so when, if you have somebody who's gonna take them out you know uh, out there I'm always looking to make sure he's not as good-looking as I am or anything else cuz you know what the heck he may say hey you know, George is a nice guy, but this guy is really better than George. I'm just, and this is, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put it into a relationship from a business perspective. You try to, once you get the customer, uh, you try to satisfy the customer so he or she does not leave. If you don't have the product there, you try to give them a rain check or you try to give them a discount or you say, hey, we'll order it for you right now because you once they go into my competitor store, they may not, they may like their product better and now they're going to buy more stuff there and I just lost the sale. And so advertising brings them in, and once they bring them in, that's where the personal selling and everything else and the promotional uh, and uh, the way the store is laid out and the customer service, uh, you, you know, uh, customer relation management that we'll, uh, you've learned about if you're in the marketing field uh, uh, kicks in. You know, uh, adverting uh, contributes to increasing <coughs> and acts as a stabilizing force. Okay, so we took care of that. I'm going to slide her along here. Now, this next one, which we're going to look at the abundance principle. When I look at the abundance as, uh, uh, assumption, in an economy that produces more goods and service that can be consumed, remember, you've got your quality of life, your standard of living. I've got my money. I've got my pay. I've got disposable income. How do I spend it? I give so much to charity. How do I spend it on my self-indulgent? That's what marketing is, is how do I get me to be a self-indulgent using products on myself? You know, pamper myself, okay? Uh, so you know, we have that. The other one, abundant principle, you're looking at uh, complete information. Remember, keeps customers informed about the uh, alternative. That's what advertising does. It tells customers about other things that are available for them or me, okay? Now, let me just hang on. And the last one here, self-interest. And we talked about compete more e e effectively, okay? Just a second here. Oh, that pop up. <coughs> Okay, now it looks at this uh, advertising stimulates. If I'm looking at advertising, we use the exhibit here. What does it basically do? Is this a thing? Advertise stimulates competition. Many buyers are selling because when I advertise, and a competitor may not be making my product, or has a comparable product. 
they're seeing the ads and now they're going to say, hey, they're reducing it by 20%. I have to reduce mine by 30% to get the customers in. Okay, it's innovative new product. That's what advertising tells me. Remember, it's a communication. I am a marketer. I'm a manufacturer. I'm a business. I'm a service. How do I bring my name out? How do I tell customers I have a sale? And that's through advertising. They're part of the integrated marketing uh, campaign. And better educated customers. I tell customers. You know, and if you look at advertising, when you look at so, uh, on the internet, I could compare different products products line by line makes it easy compare this and you see uh, if I look at uh, 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 flow you know I mean, when, uh, when she's out there uh, uh, basically talking about uh, we have you know uh, she, we'll tell you what your competitors prices are yeah you know, for the same kind of a service or anything else and we're still cheaper uh, than, the, uh, than the competition you know so they're comparing and they're using that in the ad so customers are more informed through the advertising otherwise I'm gonna say one ad and then I'm gonna look at the other ad and I'm gonna say, wait a minute the, the other ad says there's no way you know this one's a natural ad and this one's organic why is, are they higher then I realized natural and organic has two different meanings within the content of the good itself natural anything's natural uh, chemicals are naturally right made or organic means they have no chemicals within them all right so there's two different but a lot of customers they just take the two organic and natural and look at it once so i just go natural and you know have a green plant or something else or a, 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 a picture of a tree so oh they must be organic and it's, remember is it deceptive there or is it just a play on words or on visual aids uh, to help you think better or think in that direction, okay? And uh, healthier economy. And so that's basically what it uh, does. So I'll put that one out there. Impact on uh, uh, impact and criticism. Now you have short term manipulative marketing or uh, advertising goals, and you have long term macro arguments. So let's look at these uh, manipulative ones. If I click on this, I'm going to go with the with the figure. So if I'm looking at this figures, uh, I'm in advertising, so I like to use more visuals. Even, uh, I, I write this out on the concept maps or the mind map, so when you're studying for the exams, you'll need the visuals easier. You, you see everything right there. You know, deception, unfair practices. When you have that, I have that here. If I click it on, the same thing you have in here. I just brought it down here. It's easy for studying, but this got a little color to it. It's an advertising blue, light blue. You know, blue is a very uh, 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 a calming color. Yellow, it catches my You see how the colors, do not overpowering but it tells me short-term manipulative deception unfair practice puffy false promises that i can't deliver incomplete description of the product false comparisons uh bait and switch i tell you i come in here here's a sale oh we just sold out i'm the first customer how did you sell out oh uh, here they're trying to sell the ethical thing to do if you run out of the sale you can say the first uh customer we have enough for 50 customers once you're out we no longer have it but if for some reason the shipment doesn't come in and you, you want to satisfy your customer Hey, I came in the ad and there's 50 customers ahead of me and I'm 52. I'm sorry you missed it. I'm going to say, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the better item here for the same price. We didn't have it. We made a mistake. That sinks in more to that customer than anything else. Because now what happens, that customer will tell his or her friends, hopefully in the social media and Facebook, hey, George's company basically gave me more. Here's a sale. They didn't have the item. They substituted with a higher good item. That's not bait and switch because I got it for the sale price at a higher good item, uh, a product or services that they didn't have because we uh, didn't buy enough. We underestimated uh, the, the customer response to that. That's basically the best thing that you could uh, ever had. That is ethical. That's social responsible. And that's built customer trust more than you would ever think okay visual distortions uh false demonstrations uh uh and then i look at visual distortions a lot of times when i look at some of the hamburgers or something in this uh, on the video or on the tv man they look big fluffy when i buy it what the heck is it it's like where's the meat at remember they said the one commercial little lady where's the beef at i think it was a burger king commercial where's the beef at there's nothing there or, or wendy's i forget i just remember the little lady and that's the bad thing about advertising i remember the the campaign but i can't remember who wrote the advertising whose ad, ad uh, that was so that was that tells me it's a short term it worked for the short term but long term uh, the, the brand didn't stick with me because i forgot about it okay 
And remember, unfair practice, everything else, you get government regulation. And when government uh, regulation comes in, it affects the whole industry because they're going to say, here's the rules, no one could do that. And then, uh, so we have all that. Okay, so that's, uh, and we had this one in here on fair practices, remember? We did that. Now, the long term, let me go on the, uh, uh, the overview. The long term macro argument affects on the value system. It promotes materialism, like it or not, marketing. You see everyone else. And, you know, not only uh, when you look at the children and everything else, and I'm, uh, we go later on uh, on ethical practices when I'm marketing the children, uh, do I start having to start selling them lipstick, makeup at the, uh, to kids that are five or six? Uh, uh, so, already, materialism. Uh, you have to have this bag. It has to be a Barbie bag. It can't be in nobody else's bag if it doesn't have Barbie on there. Uh, you know, and even though I have to have only a Barbie. So, I'm already saying... I'm creating, I'm instilling materialistic uh, values within that. But that's the society we live in. That's the culture we live in. We're in a free capitalistic culture. It's basically materialistic that we're in there. I mean, like it or not, that's what marketing is, to sell products, materials, and to help improve your um, uh, uh, quality of life and standard of living. Okay, manipulation. Okay, so am I man manipulating my product to say it's a better value than another product you're advertising? Most likely, yes. Because uh, that's what advertising does. What makes me better than somebody else is, look, when I'm an, uh, an employee and I'm going for a raise, why should I? I'm the best employee you ever had. How do I know? I don't have any competition. I have no one to check. I keep on telling you I'm the best after a while. So I said, you must be the best employee I have. Because I keep on pounding it up. I have some students that say, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I get tired. I'm awesome. I don't want to hear awesome. Awesome is when your customers, when I look at your ad, I say, that is awesome. It's me telling you it's awesome, not you telling me you're awesome. Because now you're trying to plant the seeds, and then later on you have advertising or something else trying to convince me uh, to, you know, then I forgot where did that uh, awesomeness come from. It basically came through marketing and advertising. So remember, I'm looking at it, uh, it's a tool. To help me stimulate business it's a tool to uh, help me sustain my business there's nothing wrong with advertising it's an effective tool but if it's used in the wrong way it could hurt the brand it could hurt the customer it brings government regulation it hurts the whole industry as a whole okay incomplete information and external society uh, cost right because now everyone wants uh, and I think if I look at society costs on that look at smoking you know smoking used to be cool everyone had to smoke and then the, what was the cost on society you had cancer you had people getting sick you had lung cancer you had a lot of other things people were addicted to cigarettes so they're basically it has a long-term effect on it because it was uh, uh, didn't give uh, all the information about the uh, negative uh, effects of smoking in the long term. Okay? Remember, there's nothing wrong with advertising. I am not knocking down advertising. What I want to do through this whole chapter and everything else that the author, everything else trying to bring in here is to be ethical, be fair, be consistent, be honest. Customers like honesty for a good price. They don't mind paying a little higher price if they don't think they're going to be ripped off. Okay? Social impact, we have that one. Okay, uh, did I have that one? Yeah, we have that one. Profilation of advertising. Too much. If I have too many ads after a while, it becomes spam. I get annoyed with that thing. The one thing I hate is when somebody keeps on asking me, I buy something over and over. Hey, drop it. I put you on my spam list. You know, clutters to different mediums. You know, because uh, when I look outside, I'm bombarded with all kinds of advertising. Well, and everyone's trying to outdo the other one. Bigger sign, no sign, more risque, more sexy, more controversial. All those things are in this affecting culture, the psychic culture after a while, because now I'm, what I'm doing, I'm basically changing the values indirectly hopefully i'm not doing that nuisance for customers lower effectiveness for advertising north american problem you, you know I, I click on i got ads all over i came to watch a youtube i gotta watch a five minutes i came and click through it or some ads that really annoy me i click on there and i can't get out of that ad i'm trying to get rid of it and it follows me along i'll never buy from that uh, uh, company i usually don't i i block them and i'll never uh, usually unless it's something i have to i will not buy from that because that's annoying and marketer and advertising has to know how far could you advertise and saturate or frequency and exposure before it becomes a nuisance and it starts uh, working in, in reverse? Instead of stimulating the product, it starts uh, decreasing the demand for my product because people are so annoyed with, with me and they won't give me my email, they won't give me some information because I'm bombarding them with uh, a, a lot of advertising. I'm not saying it's good, good or bad, but uh, you have to be careful. Remember, that's the frequency that you can learn in advertising and uh, 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 exposure rate. Okay, now stereotyping. 
how am I going to put this? I teach uh, uh, management and I teach leadership. And some of the stereotyping when looking at the roles of different sexes, uh, you know, uh, male and female, let's just keep the gender right there, male and female. You always see men in leadership position in a lot of the advertising you, you, uh, 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 or uh, in the uh, commercials and everything else. And you see women more being sub, uh, uh, sub, uh, subjective to the man. You know, they're more of a sex appeal and men are more of the macho and the women are, oh, whatever the man wants. I'm not saying that, 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 that that's, my, that's not the case. But I'm saying through advertising, so after a while I'm creating a certain stereotype. Or I'm creating a certain stereotype of a certain type of individual, a certain type of a culture. Even though I'm making fun of that culture, indirectly I'm stereotyping that culture. Now is that unethical, that regulation that I crossed the line of discriminating? Uh, do you see, remember, you've got to be very careful when you print that print. It sounds cute, it sounds good, but will it be effective? And maybe the message isn't what... I intend it to be so now it's out there how do I pull it back and how do I and you know and if I made a mistake I pull it back I apologize I'm sorry we did not intend that don't wait till or, or and some people to pull it out and then after they get slapped around oh we made a mistake we'll pull it back now they did it on purpose to get the PR public, public relation and then pull it back and apologize some companies do it constantly and after a while people say hey you're not doing this, and, and we don't trust you anymore. You're doing this on purpose, and that's where the regulations come in and say, you've done all these ads over and over again, you apologize, but this is a systematic issue that or problem that you're always doing to deceive or extend and then always apologizing to the customer. That's unethical. And then now you have regulation that only affects the advertiser that created the ad, but the whole industry as a whole, uh, as a whole has to uh, uh, live with the new rules and regulation. So it kind of moves, uh, 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 re reduces or uh, creativity uh, or what I could do as an ad. Okay, insensitivity again. The ads, uh, uh, whether or not an ad is labeled insensitive, depends on the subjectivity and the geography, language, uh, prime time, uh, nudity. You had an ad in the book that you looked at, like I mentioned before, the one lady, uh, a lady there had a shoe, and she was with one leg, and she had one shoe there, and the other shoe up here. What I'm going to do with this extra shoe? So that was insensitive to that thing. Even though they say it comes in a pair, it's a good shoe. Uh, are we okay? Do you know what I mean? Remember, you had to look at it. it. It got the attention in the European Union, but it also got a lot of negative uh, response from people who are disabled, uh, you know, through the war, through the veterans, or through some accidents, or through some kind of disease. It's very insensitive them to make uh, light of that uh, on their uh, misfortune uh, th that they have no control about. Okay? So we took care of that. Let's move along here. Now, social impact and perceptive. Okay, negative perception. Incomplete information creates unwanted uh, externalities, uh, interferes with free press, is very biased. Okay, positive, contributes to growth and prosperity because I'm honest, people buy my product, it does help society, it does add value, it does help you, it does make you more healthier, it does improve on your language skills, it, whatever it does, you know, it's rich information and, <clears throat> let me just slide this over just a touch, offers information not found in other sources, okay? So we took care of that. Social responsibility and ethics. Now when I'm going to go into social responsibility and ethics, we've talked about this through this whole chapter i've been throwing it in remember this what i like about the concept maps my mind map i could just go back and forth and you could read it so ethical more ethical is morally right now i'm gonna go real quickly what's ethical and what's unethical now it's ethical legal and i use the example uh, just bear with me uh, uh, back from uh, introduction of business if you had some business classes or some ethics classes ethics is above legal so when I'm looking at this, let's, uh, uh, but it's not legal, but it's above uh, the law. So if I'm looking at, is abortion legal? Yes, it's legal in the United States. Is it ethical? Depends on your frame of uh, uh, on your frame of what you consider uh, uh, abortion. You know, when does life start? Some people say life doesn't start after the uh, after it's born. Some people say life starts at conception. Other individuals say it's my body. I'm a woman. I can do what I want. Uh, you know, uh, the sperm came in there, but life doesn't start there, so I could stop it. So when I'm looking at that, it's legal, but is it uh, ethical? It depends on your 
uh, uh, culture value, your religious value, and your perspective where you're coming in. Did you see what I'm looking at? So let's that takes care of ethics. So now the, the one question is it's already legal. So now is, is it unethical? It depends on the customer base. You know, promotes well-being, draws crowds to the event. Those are responsible advertising. Can influence the uh, ads. Look, when you look at advertising to the poli uh, uh, political scene, live in the Chicago area, they have the ads. You know, now you have pretty soon. You uh, we, we had the presidential election, and all of a sudden the ads are really nice. Looking at my what what makes me strong, what makes uh, uh, my party better than the other party. But when it comes closer to the election. You, you talk about influencing. They advertise. George is no good. George is no good. George did this. George did this. Maybe I did that when I was a little kid, about twelve years old. But they're bringing it back up now, and and they don't say he was twelve years old. Now he's a he's a baby boomer. He's more mature. We all made mistakes when we're kids, but the ad didn't say that, so it does affect it. That's unethical. Is it true? Yes, it's true. But is it unethical because they didn't give me all the information? Promotes harmony, stability. So society, socially responsible society. Society views the best. Okay, so we've taken care of that. In the uh, in the re related uh, components of ethics, traditional actions of people in society or community. And so you got traditional actions of people in the society or a community. Physiological rules society says to justify past or future action. Those are my uh, uh, laws, for lack of better words. Attitudes, feelings, and beliefs of personal value systems. In levels of ethical uh, responsibility, you know, group one, customs, debate, society, components of group, uh, uh, new rules and regulations. Uh, individual, custom rules, individual. So when I'm looking at <clears throat> interrelated components of ethics, I, from an advertising perspective, for lack of better words, have to look at all of this. The group, I have to look at the individual, I have to look at ethical definition, custom rules established by other two levels, groups, individual debate, single ethics. All this has to be in my mind, even when I'm dealing with my advertising. One thing I want to just state, I'm going to, no matter what you advertise, you're going to upset somebody. I want to be, you know, because everyone just, you know, uh, somebody may not like pink. Uh, pink's a bad color. Somebody may not like the way I cut my hair. Somebody may not like the glasses I'm wearing. Whatever, you know, I'm going to upset somebody in my advertising. I shouldn't advertise. I, you know, uh, I have some class, I got students say, why do you have a print media? You, you know, you're killing all these trees. I try to tell them, say, I use recycled little paper. Uh, you know, we recycle, we do things uh, uh, differently, but I still have to have some kind of media uh, out there. So, you're going to upset someone, but I want to make sure that the ads that I do, I could live with them. That I feel they're honest, they're responsible. I did not mean to hurt any individual, any culture, any group. I'm not insensitive to them, but I can't make, you know, we're all unique. We all have different triggers. We all have different uh, 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 ethical values, just like you can see here. Your participants, individuals, groups, customs, religious has different values than uh, other religions. You know, they all basically have the the, the, the same moral values uh, are doing to others like you want to do unto you. You know, the golden rule that goes across most religions and most uh, uh, cultures. But, uh, but but we're all different. You know, I mean? so understand that. But I'm targeting to this market here. I'm not trying to upset them, but I could be a little more risque with a younger generation than I can with a baby boomer. But sometimes, you know, I got to still be careful because they could cross over the other people could see my ad and still make it uh, or think it's offensive uh, uh, to them. So just remember, in advertising, as long as you, as the advertiser and your group and the team that advertises, make sure that you cross it, do some uh, 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 test surveys, show the ads, pre-show, and a lot of people, a lot of companies do that to make sure that it's not hurting anyone, look at all different groups, and then the ad goes, and then it goes, out, and you still may still upset someone. But in my heart, I did it to, um, uh, 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 to the belief that I did it ethically, social responsible, and mine was not to stereotype or, or do anything else to offend any other culture. But sometimes I may do it indirectly without knowing it, okay? Now, oh, we've got a few more. How does the government regulate? Okay, they go national, they're going to go through the legislative, uh, judiciary systems, the state, you know, governor, attorney general, and municipality, mayor, uh, police chief, courts, and everything else. When I'm looking at advertising, I may do a national advertising, but I'm upsetting someone in a different state or municipality. So the nas nationally, I'm doing massive, no problem. I'm going to a certain state, I have to look at the rules 
and requirements for that state and now I'm advertising in a municipality I have to know national state and also municipality that I haven't offended anyone that I follow all the rules and regulation that's required for that um, uh, target or niche market that I'm going to be uh, uh, promoting and uh, distributing my advertising uh, uh, communication to the, the constituent international regulation again varies from country to country restrictions you know what's uh, 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 U uh, European uh, Union, if I look at that, there are a lot more. If you look at some of their ads, if you take me for international uh, uh, advertising, if you look at some of their ads, they're a lot more risque than they are here. They could have, uh, they have news, pay news reporters that may be you know, uh, almost looking like they're uh, 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 very loosely clothed i'm trying to be very careful because I, I don't want to upset anyone in the audience uh, uh, but it's very acceptable there they don't have no problem with that here that could be say hey you're pushing the envelope that's uh, uh, uh inappropriate that's uh sexist or that's uh, too much nudity okay it's obscene so you have to look at that okay bans on specific products time slot restrictions when i can run my ads bans on coupons premiums tie-in offers prohibit prohibitation of uh, paid placement in shows arbitrary rulings and pre-approval requirements you know those international so be aware i mean you you know take an ad here and you it works well in the united states it may work well in the middle eastern but in certain countries they may not accept it you have to uh, be very sensitive to that ad. There's certain rules you have to follow. I could keep a majority ad. What I try to do is I keep majority ad and try to adjust it to the culture. But be aware of the culture. Don't just run the ad that works here and just change the face and the language. Put the wording in there and try to run it out. That works well in certain products, certain services. But you still have to be very customized to that area not to offend them not to violate any laws or rules okay then you got federal regulations you know different agencies will look at this you know uh, uh, uh federal trade uh, uh, uh fda fcc uh patent uh library account all these intellectual you know broadcasting media uh, uh, uh licensing uh, 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 uh federal trade commission you know deceptive unfair comparative ads you know library of congress copyright uh, works of authorship okay so now let's go into trademarks real quickly i just touched on that if i look at coca-cola I mean, look i thought this is a little, it's not my international one but it works out well here coca-cola's trademarks look is retained throughout the use of similar letter forms and style even though in different alphabet here's coca-cola this is a trademark here's coca-cola different languages i don't know what, this one is probably middle eastern i'm not sure which really some of these languages are but if i look at it enjoy you know what i mean so it has everything else but it has the same trademarks and it's trademarked in different languages and different cultures. So when I'm looking at trademark, it's just the wording change, Coca-Cola, to accommodate and still enjoy, okay? This doesn't mean it must mean it's enjoy, this must mean enjoy whatever, this is enjoy. And then basically, but you see the, the, the color, the Coca-Cola uh, uh, emblem, for lack of better words, this is what's trademarked on this. So when you see that color on the can or on the logo, you could say, hey, that's a Coke product, okay? Now, so I'll turn that off, state and local, again, we go through that there. Printer's Inc. guideline, when I look at that, untrue, deceptive, misleading. Uh, uh, national markets comply with state laws, and we talked about that. Little FTC, uh, FDIC, you know, protects uh, 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 Fair Trade uh, Commission, Consumer Protection Act, okay, and then local government regulation, for lack of better word. City, uh, consumer protection, and local government, okay? Now, non-government regulations is Better Business Bureau, uh, National Advertising uh, Review uh, Council, National Advertising Division, National Advertising Review Board, uh, regulation by the media, regulation by consumer groups, self-regulation advertiser. These are not federally or governmental run. These are self-induced agencies to make sure that everyone complies with them so it doesn't tarnish the advertising industry as a whole because the more i go risque too far it goes for these other ones to kind of review and say saying yes your ad is risque or is is at that border it, you know we will condone it we will let you put our logo your know, acceptance on there that we reviewed it it's not it's controversial but it doesn't violate any laws so this way the government if they come in and regulation the state they're at least looking at it that i haven't really 
I did my homework to make sure. Remember, because in my eyes, I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm an advertiser. I'm in, uh, let's see, in the Chicago area, we get away a lot. You know, you can do certain things that's accepted because the society here will accept it. But now you go someplace else and it's not acceptable. If you look at the new uh, video coming to, uh, 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 Chirac, you know, Chicago as Iraq, you know, there's a uh, video coming in, there's advertising. The city and everyone is upset saying, hey, that gets a negative image of the city. We're not like Iraq, even though they have a higher crime rate. But look at the uh, the, the population. You have a large group of people. But, the, you know, the, the, they're saying it's not like New York is more controlled. I'm just saying one way or the other. I'm just, just trying, don't get me in here saying, well, George is uh, agreeing with this. Dr. George is saying, I'm looking at the, how an advertising could come out there, coming in there. I don't know if they went through that. Now, is that hurting the ad? Is hurting the city? And, you know, when you look at the the publisher, I, I mean, uh, the, the director and, and the movie filmmaker, they're saying it's just a, it catches the eye, it, it does that, but is it putting that seed that when I come to Chicago, it's similar to Iraq in certain areas, or is it the whole city like that? You mean, so that could be a nightmare for the Chicago that's trying to bring in the face to bring tourism in, so they're fighting that. I don't know how it's going to win, but you see how the advertising could change culture, could change an idea indirectly, but it's still, it's. Uh, I think when I look at the, uh, looking at some of the previews, what they're trying to do is highlight the high numbers of uh, 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 violence in the uh, in the area, I mean, it could be comparable to a lot of a lot of larger municipalities. I'm not saying this. You know, Chicago's not the worst; it's not the best, but it's been signaled out, and that's where uh, it's looking at that uh, aspect of uh, uh, you know why they're doing. It. They're trying to bring the highlight on the violence and try to contain the violence, and so people are more aware of the violence and maybe come up with new creative ideas to resolve the violence or to get people to, I don't want to say snitch, but if uh, you're looking at it, you know, if you look at it, uh, the, the code of silence, we don't tell, because, you know, we don't want to get hurt, or we don't want to uh, uh, turn in our neighbors or our friends or anything else. But if they're doing something wrong, illegal, you have to be able to stand up and say, we won't accept this in the community, and we're going to report it, or, you know, uh, uh, community watch is basically what that's set up. I haven't seen the film, I'm not doing that, I'm just uh, tying this in here to the advertising, because the ads are going to be coming out pretty soon, and if it was uh, the next time we're teaching this class, you'll see, or the next time uh, I update this, that probably already will have played out, and that'll be a good advertising uh, case to work through to see uh, what was the cause and effect, and uh, you know, was the advertising ethical, unethical? Did it damage? It, was there enough information? And what was the real intent of the ads? Is the, what will basically come out, and that depends how the consumers take it, how the general population takes it, and. Uh, uh, what happens to the overall outcome in the city? Yeah, I'm talking about the the name uh, brand name uh, image. You know, will people forget that the movie's around for a while? How they're gonna come out? Is, or is there gonna be another movie that's gonna kind of counter off or uh, kind of offset that? Yeah, interesting. That's what I like about advertising. We and you know, what I want you to do when you take this uh, when you're taking these classes and after start looking at different ads. Because you're gonna be doing an uh, uh, an advertising uh, campaign. Uh, uh, for me in, in this class. So you're going to do an advertising uh, 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 business uh, campaign uh, uh, plan. You know, general, who's your customer, who's your target, what kind of ads you're going to use. Are you going to use a social media ad, uh, create kind of a, uh, uh, an ad, create a, a, a slogan or something else. And that's what you're going to be doing for this advertising class just to get a feel. It's not as easy as you think. And after you create it, maybe we'll, we'll uh, show other people within the class as, as a focus group. Was well, it offensive? Not, you know, when you create it, so start looking at ads and you say, hey man, what are they trying to tell me? What's the hidden message? They got my attention and then what's the hidden message? What else are they trying to tell me? What's in there that I didn't see but my mind's recording, okay? So you got advertising agencies, uh, research and verify claims, uh, comparative data before use, liable for misleading fraudulent claims, many use in-house legal counsel. So after a while, you know, you, you have to look at it, but you, you get that group thing. Uh, you know, it's good to do the ads and try to get a focus group to say, what do you think? Did I upset anyone? And have uh, like an independent panel to review it. You all know to uh, you run the ad in a small target market before you do it nationally. A lot of uh, uh, companies do that.
Okay. Okay. And the American Association of Advertising, American Federation uh, Association of Advertisers. These are just a list of the other ones. And if I look at this one, this is just something as an industry wide association, you know, principles exhibited to tell the truth. And this is the one that if I'm going to let me just look at this because we're going to be, oops, sorry, we'll, 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 we'll close with this, but let me just make this just a little bit bigger. Okay. If I'm looking at advertising, this is the whole heart social responsible. And it, you know, you could have different ones. Tell the truth. Advertising should tell the truth, shall reveal significant facts, the omission of which would be mislead the public. Tell them exactly what the truth is. You know, not tell them everything, little thing, oh, it may pinch you, but to the major things, let them be aware of it. Sustainable. Advertising claims should be sustainable by evidence and position of an advertiser and advertising agency prior to making such a thing. They have to be truthful. They have to be sustainable. They have to stand. If the product says it's going to last for five years and last for five days, that's not sustainable. Maybe it's just one, but overall. Comparison. Advertising should refrain from making false and misleading unsustainable statements or claims about a competitor or his products or services. And that's the same thing that happens in, politi uh, in political. You have to be truthful. Oh, we're sorry. We misled you. We made a mistake. And we pull it back. But the, the damage is done. The person who read it before may not read it again to find your disclaimer. And when you have a disclaimer, it's not on the front page. It's a little ad. We made a mistake. Please forgive us. That's an unethical thing. Bait advertising. Advertising should not offer products or service for sale unless such offer constitutes a bona fide effort to sell the advertised products or services and is not a device to switch customers to goods or sale or services usually with a higher price. If this is the ad and this comes in, does not run. The customer, I have the product, here it is, everything you want. And then, but how do I do it? I have this product and I have it next to a higher end product. So I'm looking to sell product, I get this and I look at this other product and I'm looking, hmm, wait a minute, I didn't know this product had that. Is that a bait and switch? No, you're making your own determination. I haven't changed anything, I had the product on hand. The problem is I come in here and I don't have that product uh, here available and then they try to switch me to this one. Well, we have this one here, you know, maybe we'll give you 10% off and base, uh, so it comes up to the regular product. It's a fine line there, bait and switch. A lot of time bait and switches, they'll come in here, you buy the product and you come in and say, well, you know, this doesn't have this or they have a product that's up there is broken or doesn't look as good as the picture did on the product so you're going to buy the higher end very careful guarantees and warranties i'm going to have to go into this price claims advertise avoid price claims that are false misleading or claims that do not offer probable saving you know we're 20 percent cheaper than our service our cost is 20 percent cheaper than our competitors when i look at my competitors there's no way in heck my competitors are 50 percent you know you're higher than my competitors by 20 percent so then i'm using a comparison which people trust me because i have a strong brand and you don't check my competitors but somehow they run across my competitors ad and then they go wait a minute i've just been lied to i no longer trust your brand so once you lose faith in your product to your or by your cub the, to the company by a false ad, you're gonna lose a big chunk of your uh, advertising. You know, the consumers forget and forget. So after a couple months, I re-advertise. Some will remember, some will forget. What a lot of companies do is they rebrand themselves and come up with another name, and it's still as deceptive until they get caught. Do not do that. You want to sustain them. You want to give the ads. You want to help. You want to be informative. You want to make your business grow. Advertising is the strongest tool of communication to my general public. Other than them coming into my store, how do I communicate them out there? How do I, how, what frequency? What do I tell them? How do I bring them in there? Do I tell them all the truth? Uh, uh, you know, it's no different when you do a resume. I tell them everything. Do I tell them every little detail? No. You tell them the main parts. If there's any kind of uh, discrepancies, the main ones, you don't have to give every day you weren't there or, or everything you did but just the major ones that could have an effect on, uh, on me hiring me or me purchasing a product or service and then uh, taste and uh, decency advertising should be free of statements illustration and locations that are offensive to good taste or public decency okay so that's in a nutshell is basically uh, this whole uh, a chapter here let me just bring this back and then let me just bring this back and we'll bring this back and we are done with chapter three and you know the first three chapters we did so far we're looking at 
the first three chapters we're doing it's just an introduction this is our you know uh, the uh, you look at the first three chapters to get you a baseline of advertising uh, you already had some of you already had it for marketing it's a continuation of taking this class you already take and uh, um, uh, uh, principle of marketing marketing 245 I also teach that so you have the basics we brought as so but the next chapter is going from uh, uh, chapters 4 all the way to 19 we start looking at actually taking what you've learned and start developing ads start doing uh, uh, looking at different ways of uh, advertising different medias that we'll be utilizing different social networks uh, different ways to reach to the, the client but you in your mind when you're doing that now in your mind when you're actually creating that creativity you understand the rules the regulation and different agencies uh, 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 what effect it has on a customer what effect it has on a brand so now you develop your creativity and after you develop it you start thinking about all this other thing did I violate anything ethical am I socially responsible was I deceptive was I manipulative what did I do or was I honest with the customer am I an honest you know to some companies their whole thing is being just honest they're being risque and be offensive that's their whole product line I'm not talking about those companies that's their marketing model that's their advertising model that's their integrated communication uh, 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 campaign uh, that's what the company is known for if I look at uh, I don't want to say Victoria's Secret but I'm looking at uh, uh, I don't want to mention them, but there's some that are, you already know they already pushed the envelope all the way uh, on that mag magazine for lack of a better word pushes the envelope on uh, on uh, uh, offensiveness but when people buy that they already know they don't buy it they already know it's an offensive uh, uh, to, you know, they push the envelope, it could be very offensive. All right, so that's it for this now. Uh, this is a little longer chapter, but look, uh, remember, uh, you're taking me online or just a supplement to lecture you, you've taken me. So you're learning as much using the technology, the resources through either on YouTube if you're watching this or uh, uh, iTunes uh, uh, a university that Harper has. Remember, when you go into that iTunes University, if sometimes you don't see the YouTube on there, you go into, when you uh, log into uh, Har uh, into the Harper's uh, student portal, up on top it says iTunes and all my Blackboard shells, I have iTunes, uh, uh, Harper iTunes, you click on there, it opens up, you have to have uh, iTunes logged into uh, on your PC. A lot of the labs at Harper has iTunes already in there. So when you click on there, you go down to management. I have management, a whole bunch of classes I teach in management. You have another one on marketing. This one, I'm just starting off on uh, uh, doing it in uh, Harper iTunes. You, you can click on there into the uh, uh, marketing section, pick up the marketing, and you can uh, watch these short videos. And, uh, and there's other instructors that may have other, uh, maybe teaching the same course, but put all their own, uh, uh, flip the classroom or their own, uh, uh, lectures online so you may not hey George is a little confusing in this area Dr. George confused in this area maybe I'll, I'll look at Dr. Sally or uh, uh, Professor Robin or somebody else uh, uh, that's also teaching this or Kathy Paula that's uh, teaching the same advertising class and seeing how she or uh, you know uh, how both of them uh, are actually uh, uh, utilizing um, or presenting the same material in a different way and you may, it may click. Remember, I present it the way it comes to I use concept maps because this is what works out well for me. I can cover a lot of data, a lot of information in a real short time frame. Another instructor has a different way of doing it. They may just take the key aspects of what they think is important in the chapter. That's all they talk about. Or they may just lecture it and may have different graphs or different designs. So utilize it. You know, uh, Harper iTunes U is a good tool. It's underutilized. There's a lot of uh, courses out there, especially in accounting and other classes. Please utilize it. I just showed a pitch in there because uh, uh, as a student, I wish I had some of the uh, resources that Harper offers here to all the students uh, uh, to uh, Harper uh, iTunes. And you know, once in a while I have this on Facebook. And the reason I have a Facebook, sometimes it's easy for students to, uh, to download on their smartphones. I have them both ways. I try to be flexible for different markets of students who, uh, oh, as long as I, they get to uh, view this video. So anyway, this one's on advertising. I put a, a little, you see how I advertise a little about Harper iTunes use within the advertising uh, class here. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and uh, we'll start, uh, the next chapter is going on, we'll just start getting into the meat of advertising. And thank you again for uh, choosing this uh, course, and I'll see you in the forum. Bye.